did. This is. I'm sure they did. Yeah, I they know did. they did. Last time we spoke, we were on the eve of the Paul Bunyan Trophy football game. Yuck! We were way off base with our predictions. We'd like to accept full responsibility for those. <laughs> Technically, were they predictions? It wasn't a prediction. It was more of a hope. But slight prediction we, and slight failure. I feel like we did express and we were very clear that these were optimistic hey. predictions. Hey. Who's keeping track? But hey, it's February. We got through Valentine's. We got to a new year. A lot of things have happened. How's your winter been, pal? <laughs> it's it's <laughs> been all right, you know, just fighting through it. Been a little chilly. Actually, you it's know been what? Fine. It's For been the most part... Yes, the last couple of days, a little, little iced, a little iced in, but we're doing all right. A couple of iced days. I, feel I like, mean, I feel you like with once... the family, how has the family been, well, it's been taking good. that just, in? Just a few pukes here and there, a few iced days, but... I feel pukes, like, did you say? A couple just a couple days. of them? We, we oh. had two puke days and Ooh. two iced days Ooh. this past week. Other than that, it's been pretty good. Nothing like, like kids and their germs, right? Something about me just feels like I was talking to my sister today, and she was texting me about sledding, and I was like, something inside of me just felt like it's too late in the season to go sledding. The snow's going to melt. After the snow's melt, we're into spring, and yeah. it's full-blown golf season, baseball season, All ring the, the bell, ring the wedding bell. season. <laughs> Kiss so, the bride. So did you go sledding this? I today? did. I did. I went up and down the hill a handful of times and you know. Do you had a good did time. you like that you took the kids, right? You no, didn't just me. you didn't take a couple uh me? <laughs> just you and to buy him. <laughs> just racing down the hill. We went to the top of the tallest hill in Michigan. No, yeah, I took the kids over to one. Did you uh we had a did blast. You... Brittany went down the hill by herself for the first time, so impressive. Big day for the Hayden family. Did you uh take any alcohol with you? None. This is an elementary school. Just an elementary party? It was eleven in the morning. Did did What's you have you? a did you have a uh, hill in high school or like oh dead man's did you you had a hill oh everybody had a hill everyone has a hill did you ever yeah do we do we need to go there everybody knows that they had a good time at the hill did, did you guys <laughs> bring alcohol there and like party uh, and... I don't know that we yeah we did yep we did and then there was it's a natural cooler there right was booze there was girls there was sleds there was snow I mean that fast. was probably we're like, going fast hey probably, babe will you go down the hill with me maybe top ten moments of being a teenager is at Dead Man's Hill just. So cutting it loose. There was there was one time Hitting where jumps, right? Breaking bones, maybe. No. There there was one time where my parents were uh, not letting me out of the house to go sledding with my friends. I think I was a junior or a senior in high school, and uh, I just slipped out the basement window, slipped out, and went sledding, and uh, wow. boozed it up, and and had a good party. But climbing back up the hill. After drinking a little bit, that was some brutal stuff. I feel like the drink gives you extra strength, though. To get up I the mean, hill. sometimes. Got to go man. up the side of the hill. See, people make the mistake of going straight down, then try to go straight yeah. back up. That's the mistake. So you think it's easier because you don't have to do the extra steps. But if you go to the side, then usually there's less slope, less slip, because there's been less sleds. So less slip. Let me just tell you, folks. Go to the side. Go up the side. You'll save yourself a lot of calories. <laughs> so, so now that that we've got it's the uh, sledding tips from the Hayden household one hundred and one out of the way, what what else has been going on? You've been you've been doing good. You've been yeah. you've been puking a lot. The kids have been just no, dude, sick no. all the time. Is there anything worse than like the kids? In the 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 people with the kids in their household, oh, just dude. being sick all the time. How many things were you going to come to or going to do that you had to cancel due to your kids being sick? A good amount. I mean, it's just a matter. It's a ticking time bomb. So, like uh, this week, both my kids puked, as we discussed in detail. 
in uh, detail. This next coming week, I expect a clean bill of health. But the week after that, all bets are off. <laughs> all bets are so off. So if we can get through two weeks, then you're just playing with house money at that point. You get to three <laughs> weeks, you're starting to think like, maybe we've come out the what other is, side what of this has thing. Here? You get to four weeks, then you're like, <laughs> we are overdue. <laughs> and then <laughs> puke on the walls. Somebody's coughing. Somebody's got sent home with measles. It's it's you don't want it's measles. Amazing. That's nothing to joke about. I am uh, not so jealous of that. So aspect. yeah, but we're, we've been dodging that. We're coming out the, the other, part. We're coming out the other side of this thing. I'd say the closest I came to puking today. <laughs> oh boy, was at the beginning of <laughs> our golf round. <laughs> Not only were the jokes terrible from our guy Alex or whatever his name was. <laughs> it was Christopher. The guy, he should give be given a Nobel Peace Prize for recycling the same joke over and over and over again. He could save the world with all that recycling. It, it, was, it was. It was ridiculous. Precious. But I own, what furthered that pain was obviously the 12-point comebacks. Golly. But, but before we get into that. Because, I, and you know, spring's coming and the Spartans in March and everything's coming in that front. Touching <laughs> on, everything's coming on that front. Um, <laughs> touching on that guy. <laughs> Some of the jokes. He's on a roll. <laughs> the man said at first, it was like, you know what? And, and people, run, you run across this guy a lot. I have where people oh, do. There's you this run across guy. this guy that got one. has these jokes and he keeps recycling them. I don't know that I have seen someone recycle a joke that quickly and just kept reloading In them. In concession. In concession. Literally saying, Oh with no acknowledgement you that know he what? had just said that joke. January, February is oh. We heard him say that in a twenty minute span. Probably three or four times. It got to the point where I wasn't sure if he just loved his jokes so much that he kept saying them, or if he wasn't sure that I had heard him <laughs> say it. Right. He wanted to make sure that I had heard him say I think he wanted it. to make sure every so individual I, heard. I almost felt an inclination to tell him that I hear you. Wait like, a second, Bob. <laughs> or should, did we not laugh hard enough the first time? <laughs> yep, yeah, no. Nope. should have just gave him an outrageous that, laugh. And that at was one the point, thing. I looked at Casey and I smiled from ear to ear like this guy. And then I turned and looked at him, and he gave me the two fingers to his eyes, the two fingers to my eyes. I saw and I that. thought that he saw that I saw what I did to right. Casey, and I was right. like, there's no way. But maybe he did. And then I was like, what is this guy trying to do to me? What's and then the I was point? like, do we have beef? And I thought do for a second beef? that we might have beef, but... We did have a one-on-one -on -one moment where we were talking about maybe Joey Hauser. I told him about yes, my Joey Hauser you did. experience. Keep shooting, Joey. I felt like I was trying to build a bridge to him. Yes. Tell him about my experience. And then he came over and talked to me about something else later about, you know, Spartan basketball. So, like, we did get an understanding. But I don't I don't mess with that guy. Not one. <laughs> not one iota. Like, it was that or it was that ringtone. I, I think, think the 80s called. They want their <laughs> ringtone back. It was the we original iPhone ringtone. And then this man has the bones to say that, and his phone goes off, <laughs> and it's Seinfeld. <laughs> said, From the 90s. The 70s, because you got to apparently dial it back 20, 30 so years. So I, I, I think you just mentioned something that I, I feel like is factual now. He Everybody did, knows a guy like that. He wanted to get... More laughs the second time. Yeah, I, I think he that he thought he, he didn't get hear. enough the first time. He was like, you know what? He's like, I'm gonna get him again. And this time, these laughs are gonna come rolling in. I think he thought it was impossible that no one thought that was hysterical, or like <laughs> that no one would be like start saying it as well. He was like, he was making jokes. He wanted his own stand up. He was trying to get some laughs. Well, he was a guy being a dude that just wasn't guy a dude. Guy being a dude. He wasn't a dude. He was not. A dude. <laughs> That's the thing about guys being dudes. You got to be a dude to be one of the guys doing and things I'm, that do. I'm not. <laughs> I'm, I'm not bashing him because he. I did not. Have I the enjoyed best it. Day. He made the date better, to be honest with you, because we get to have fun at his yeah. expense now. But and like, it, you get to exchange the looks between me and you and Casey. I think Mark. Marky he was Mark, getting fed up with it. Marky too. Mark was about to go knuckle knuckle <laughs> with him. Either that or they were about to be best friends. I couldn't tell. <laughs> you never know with him. You don't know with him. I was him. like, I think Mark's loving this. 
It's I'm not he's sure. either loving it or he's hating it. There's I not a ton of I think we would have known if Mark didn't like it. I think so too. I don't think he's one to to sugarcoat or pull no, a punch. Not not at all. So but, it was a good day at the country club, that's for sure. There's no doubts about that. But in general Come back with standing. Right. That's that's the downer, right? That come back. So we're we're let me just set the stage for people. And we probably should have done this first, but no. we're up at uh, Grand Ledge Country Club. Oh, yeah. And uh, shout out Jeff and the boys. Great setup oh, up yeah. there. Amazing. Two track mans, TVs all over the place. 70 booze. inches right to we're, our left. Right, right. So we go up there. We don't. We have a, a tea time at one forty-five. We got three hours on that bad boy. Oh yeah. We get up there around one ten, one fifteen, just to watch the second half of the Spartans game, and we are rolling. The group in front of us that included Christopher with all of his frequent flyer jokes antics. Man. Um, he he was uh, he was up there, and and we're we're there. We're watching the game. And it's a, it's a great environment, and we're having drinks, and we're celebrating the win on the road. Yeah, I we're, we're up coasting. thirteen we're with a minute and twelve seconds left in the game. Did you know what the turning point in the game was? What the stare down? No oh, man, the stare you down. just oh man. It was almost like an old western. I didn't standoff. realize that. And old Fran with a six year he looked him in the eye and he said, I thought we had a deal. <laughs> I talked to you last <laughs> night. Now you start, you, I don't know what you got to do. But we're winning this game, Dad. I feel like and that needs to be looked into. Old Stripes took a step forward and he said, You're goddamn right. You're we had goddamn a deal. right, I did. <laughs> And then all of a sudden they made six threes in a row, and then I, that was like the league needs that to look was like into that. halfway through the streak. I mean, it would be something to look into if it wasn't for the fact that they just kept making threes. I don't know what the ref can do to help with that. I don't know, but that was the turning point in the game because, like, at that point in the game, we're like, "Yo, Fred, no, chill. You're down yeah. by ten. This game is over." We're all laughing, at <laughs> right? We're hooting and hollering like this guy doesn't he know the game's over? We all know, and then lo and well, behold. Yeah, the nace up his sleeve. <laughs> oh, look at us. Yeah, that's right. We're about to hit six threes in a row and just cap your You think they went to timeout and just widened the rims out like a couple yeah, of inches? Maybe. They could have swapped rims, made them a little wider. Um, I just – Loosen the screws a little you bit. You know, I remember back in the day when Duke – and y'all can look it up. Somewhere around 2000, uh, probably 2001 – Duke came back. Good old Jay Will and the boys. Uh, Jay Will, maybe Carlos Boozer. Uh, um, yeah. Big with the drink. The, the uh, Dunleavy cat that they had on the perimeter. Oh, yeah. Um, they came back from someone with a minute left, with ten, uh, a minute left and like 10 points. And it was amazing that they came back with, with such little time left in a minute uh, in, in 10 points. And I saw a freeze frame of this game at 1 minutes, 12 seconds, and 13 points. And the Spartans somehow lost. We almost topped that. We, I, mean, well, I think that does top it. So, I mean, I'm, I'm going to have to take this moment to give a little bit of credit to my original home state. Oh, yeah, you flatlanders the, out there. The, the Hawkeyes made... I don't know if this is an exact stat, but six threes in a row. They just went on a tear. We missed one free throw. And, yes, you can say it's the most important free throw, and you can cherry pick that because it was the last free throw. But if we would have missed one or two before that and made the final two to make it a two-point game like or a three-point game, it's the same difference. So they, it was more of what they foul? did and not what we did. Did but do. but if you're Izzo there, you can in the debate last that. second you're down, you're up three, and there's like eight seconds left. Do you foul? I think you do, just because of how well we shot from the line. But and that can be debated. But 
I mean, that's a judgment call, and it goes both ways all the time. I I am a proponent you hear of the foul. I like to foul, but you're talking about kids here. If they foul and someone gets into the shooting, no, motion, but they don't call the continuation in the in college. And you hear just, you do hear the announcers, and they're like, oh. If you don't practice fouling like that, then you shouldn't do it. I feel like and we have I'm the like, guys that would know. Like who Tyson. the heck needs to practice fouling? Do you think there's teams out there that are running around and and saying, you know, we need to spend the last hour of practice on practicing our fouling when we're up three down I, to like thirty seconds left? I guarantee they do. That's garbage. It's a I foul. Guarantee they practice. It's a foul. Ball. Yeah, I guarantee they practice the situation. Though. You might talk about it, but are you but really think practicing about it? it? Think about it. If you're from where Izzo sits, if you want to decide whether or not you're going to do that, you got to think about the guys that are likely going to make that fall, right? Tyson, do you trust Tyson? Yes. To make that foul? I trust Tyson. I trust uh, – to make a foul, we're pros at making fouls just like turnovers. We can do that. Honestly, uh, after – in the, it's more of a situation. Stop him in his tracks. It's a situational thing. I, I think it's a situational thing. To, and with hindsight as twenty twenty, with the other team making five threes in a row or whatever it was, I think I'd probably take the foul. I would. Heck yeah. So make him shoot two. Nevertheless, they and then the get three. the get the rebound. We go to overtime, and we're still right there. And honestly, I thought there was a missed call. We were, we were never down there. Three. We were never but, there. We in lose. overtime, there's no shot. If you if if you are up 13 points with a minute and 12 seconds left, and you go to overtime, yeah. you are not winning that game. So what are our takeaways from that? Because like, there's a lot of good things that we can say about the offense. Obviously, like Joey had a great game, Tyson had a great game, Jaden had one of the best offensive games of his season, and then we turn around to the other side and we also gave up 100 we're points on test, defense. We're gonna test. So, like, your is that like a fortitude. good game for like we're gonna, tournament? Like we're gonna test your sports basketball? fortitude. Do you know who Caitlin Clark is? No. Don't think ladies any of our and know. gentlemen. Oh, I bet you our listeners know Caitlin Clark. She sounds plays. Like a girl. She plays for okay. Iowa. <laughs> she, Caitlin Clark <laughs> sounds like a girl. I, hey. I'm fifty percent of the way there. She plays <laughs> golf, golf like a girl. <laughs> yes, she is in fact the female variety. Can we say that though? I think we can. can we she is a female. She plays it basketball with females. Female. And. At uh, Hawker Carvi Arena. Can we get Hawker, back to the real excuse basketball? Me. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that? Who was that? The announcer on ESPN? Canceled. That guy is canceled. <laughs> Beyond canceled. If All you right. know, you know. I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. They start out in East Lansing showing the East Lansing <laughs> women's basketball highlights, and then they say, All right, on to the real basketball. Oh, man. And cut to the Michigan Michigan State game. That was hilarious. That guy is- Got, but, uh, back of the unemployment line now. <laughs> <laughs> but no, Kaylin Clark at Hawker Carver. Excuse me. I keep saying it wrong. It's on me. Hello. Tongue are they twister. hawking or are they carving? It's, it's Carver Hawkeye Arena. It is the arena where Iowa men and women play their basketball games. And Kaitlyn Clark is up for player of the year in the women's side of things. And... She is Steph Curry on the women's side. She freaking reigns from half court, anywhere on the court. It's amazing to watch. I haven't watched because it's women's basketball, but I've heard it's amazing to watch. I can't believe you just said that. Yeah. And, you know. It sounds like, like you have watched. Watching, I've seen highlights. But watching I today, to cover up, really. I think it's. I think it's the rims in the background in the setting at Carver Hawkeye Arena that induces. I have not seen Michigan State shoot like this. They were, what, 11 for 13 from three? Iowa was unconscious. The highest scoring Big Ten basketball game oh, in so 40 think years. To do with the I think there's arena? something with the arena. Shoot, maybe the rims are a little bigger to try and help Caitlin gain notoriety. I don't know. Maybe they're a little lower, and that's why they recruit all white guys. That could be it. They got both the McCaffrey's. I always tended to shoot they got Zelico. Do you know the Rabacha? The Rabacha that went off on us today? 
No, is, I don't know Rubacha. Is the the kid that went like six for six in the first half post player on us? Mm. His dad is Zelico Rubacha, oh. and played for the Pistons in the early two thousands and wow. won a ship with us in two thousand and four. Was he like with the Wire Boy? Or? No, he was like a buried eight nine man, probably nine ten. Yeah, his ring shines the same. Good for him. It sure does. Nice. But yeah, so he's he's of good blood. So you think it's got something to do with the Hawkeyes or I think they got something going there. Shots just fall. Well, I think there is something to, to be said about like the shape of an arena. Like you don't want something that's just op- like flat right. and just a bunch of air right. behind the backboard. You want guys generally more shoot vertical bad in the domes. and you have something that's like giving you an actual backboard right. that you're looking at instead right. of just open air. Because then it kind of if you get to those deep shots, people that aren't used to the gym, they can. Throw off the depth perception but they or they say too like in baseball if it's a dark background yeah you can see the ball better and you can like you can see things better I think the same thing like I think they're wearing black at at uh, that stadium and I feel like shooters really like that because it gives them it was depth nuts, perception. Dude. we scored almost sixty points in the second half both teams yeah we scored a hundred points each in the first half yeah that's nuts. What a game. I've never I seen mean, anything like that in college, especially that in the Big Ten. That hasn't happened there or anywhere all season long. So I think right. it was, there was something in the air today. Both teams just caught fire a little bit. So so as we were there, we watched that unfold. And honestly, you know what? Looking at the rest of the way, we could talk about us being in the tournament or not in the tournament. But I think we all know we're, we're going to be in. We have we Nebraska. We could lose the rest of our games and we're still in. Right. Eh, I don't know about that. That would be no. three losses. We would be so in the bubble. It depends. We'd still be in. If they rescheduled the, the Minnesota game, which I think they found some solutions to uh, play this game, and you know who's blocking it? Rutgers. Rutgers. Interesting. You think it might affect like their it tournament? It might. I don't think it will affect their tournament, but their seeding for sure in the Big Ten tournament. Um, we have so Nebraska I, I in that. OSU. Uh, next on our schedule, and we're trying to fit in um, that Minnesota game right before uh, we play Ohio State, like two days before. And right now, Minnesota plays Rutgers. Rutgers has an open date when we're playing Minnesota, and so does um, Minnesota. Oh, I did see that in Minnesota. So, so Minnesota is trying to play. New play Rutgers a couple days before when we're playing Nebraska, so that they get that game out of the way, and now Minnesota would be open to play us, and then we would play OSU uh, two days later to end the end the the regular season, and it makes sense, complete sense. In Rutgers is just being Rutgers about it. It sounds like some bush league shit to me. Like they're really that worried about their city where they won't play us anywhere, anytime, any place. Like we would go. Honestly, is it a home game for us? It is. A I home bet game we for would us. go to their place and play them at their place I'm before sure they would, would bend, bend sure. over backwards for I'm us. Because sure. Izzo, that's always been his motto: play anywhere, anywhere, anybody, anybody, anytime, any place. We don't care, and we shouldn't have to do that. And I don't honestly care if they make up the game because it doesn't matter. Right, it doesn't matter for us. We're in. I mean that that's three. That should be three wins. We took a loss today. We should have taken a win. We have what Man, twelve I losses? But I mean, do we have twelve losses now or ten losses? Eleven? Something. Uh, we're uh, seventeen and twelve, maybe something like 17 that. Seventeen and eleven. We're and in though. I'm we telling need. You, we, we can need, lose, we can lose the rest of our games and be in. We won't. We're nine and eight in the Big we Ten. We are topped. 10. Last I saw uh, in the chart, we were tied for 7th in the nation in quad 1 games. Yes, yeah, that's that matters. And our strength of schedule is through the that's roof. That's a thing. It is. It's a real thing. It should be the most important thing. Yeah. Because these people that schedule a bunch of cream puffs and go t- 20 Iowa. 10, it's not the same. It's just not. No. So... We're in. Uh, I think. So do we want to talk ceiling? Or? No, no. I don't I think we need to. Ceiling. I mean, we both agree, and I don't think it would surprise any call any any listener on the show that we both We're believe our high. ceiling is Final Four. I don't always say that. I mean, I, I, I think that I generally do. I'll admit it. 
but I mean, with good reason because we're always relevant. But well, yeah, because you know what, we have January, <laughs> February, <laughs> is so. <laughs> but this season in particular, we have a a guy on our roster. He's our third point guard who has been compared to Cassius Winston, the second well, best point guard. You're that talking. We, let's maybe the let's third pump, best point let's guard. Let's pump him. Let's he's pump. our third. Qu- Point guard, and then you go Hoagie, and then you go Tyson. And when you Hoagie and Tyson are clicking, there's nobody in the nation. I that's just, gonna beat I us. just want to make. There's sure nobody in the nation we can't beat. I should say that it's people because I agree. Beat us. I agree, but I want Joey. to make sure you understand that Trey Holloman he's not cash. He's not that. cash. But they the say jersey he number works a lot five. Like he moves a lot like uh-huh. the same build, but he's a freshman. He's not and the he's same. Playing build. behind two very good point guards. He's similar, much more athletic. Similar movement. No, he's not. He's not even close. He doesn't have the shooting or the passing or the vision or the command or any of it right now. But, but he might he develop wears five. some of the <laughs> He wears five and he wears a head band, damn it. That is true. God, didn't Cash get robbed? We could talk about that. Cash did get robbed. We would be Natty Champs 2020. Five should but be hanging. No one should be allowed to wear five. You know, if that happens, though, Izzo might have retired right after. That would have been number two. Mm. We wouldn't have the recruiting class that we have with all would the you McDonald's. It, you know what? Yes. I don't think he does retire, though. So as as we're hey, maybe though with COVID and everything, you never probably know. I would. I don't know. Go find some beach somewhere. He found some fire. Kick though. the feet up. You say go drink a couple of mai tais, maybe a marg or two. He can do that in the off season. Yeah, but not the same. He's recruiting all off season. He's got a lot of cachet nowadays. Well, yeah, he has cachet, but he's still got to recruit. Sure. Um. So we're up there, and we're, we're watching. A, we're, a, we're at the Crunchy Club. And Crunchy we're, Club? Crunchy's Club. Mm. You're going to cut that out? Early. No, I love but that. We're, <laughs> we're at the Country Club. You know, we're – anyway, we're up there earlier, and we're hanging out. We're watching the game, and a couple other games come on, and you know I've been slinging some wagers out there. Oh, yes. I'm peddling some bets. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in the midst of a FanDuel VIP. Oh, yeah. That's a perfect time to A little uncork. bit more of the red, sir. A little uh, pour of the Chianti. Let's just sip Whatever on you some fancy, sauce. Sir. I'll let you guys know. I tried to put in the same wager as this man, and they wouldn't allow it. So he's got that kind of pull with the FanDuels. He's putting I down do. hundreds of thousands. I do. In between hundreds and thousands, not hundreds of thousands. No. I'm just in between <laughs> hundreds, hundreds and thousands. And he's got thousands. So that's what we're talking about. So yeah, What'd you lose I'm, today? I've, so far, I've lost. You can't lose when you're winning, though, right? No, exactly. Fun coupons. The, they're fun coupons. They're not real. I I mean I You're start the Wall Street thing. The, I am the gift. I am, That's oh yeah we're printing account. we're printing up here mm-hmm. I I start with throwing in ten to fifteen dollars a month Can you talk maybe about your twenty strategy? and you know I just put that in and I built it up over time I haven't put anything in since November and we're just making casual wagers. To where I'm building some bankroll in the FanDuel site, and I get it up to like 3K. And did, so is then, that your high right yeah, now? the 3K. Did 3K. you crack 3,000? Yeah, I wow. cracked it. And, That's big time. And then from there, I'm just this is off once a $20 I get it up, deposit. Yes. What was your big bet that got you to like really propel you to the next level? I'm sure there's, there's always couple. like a parlay that jumps you, like whether it's like a yes. three game and then you build off of that. Do you remember? It? I if I remember correctly, it was a college basketball NBA situation, Ooh. which I happened to hit two favored NBA teams Any NFL in the one? the Spartans and maybe a couple NFL playoff games in there. Where I hit a parlay and it was like probably ten to twenty dollars to win like five hundred, really? six hundred was Whoa, probably the no. max like per dollar. But from Sorry that from point, the bottom, no, here. yeah, right. <laughs> hey, um, 
I've been just just riding the college basketball home teams, and it's been paying out. And specifically, the Spartans at home, I've been betting them heavy. When we were at the Iowa game, I had $200 on the Spartans winning because at that point, it's fun coupons. And I'm like, but fun coupons, it's not real money. It's no fake coupons. money in there. And I'm I'm putting I put a hundred here. You could here, pull that money there. out and actually buy something. You could, but it's not fake wh- money. I, that's my wife's logic. At least. I already got money in the and that's bank. That's why I got a boat in the back. Yeah, Ex- exactly. House <laughs> money sitting right out back. Let's go. But yeah, I'm just I, you. Once it's in there, and it's just all fun. And when I treat it that way, I'm better at gambling on sports. And when I when I start trying too hard, I think I've I've worse. And the last week or two, I've been a little worse. But for a while there, I was super hot betting, uh, picking two or three home favorites and parlaying them, and hammering I down love the way you're two hundred dollars. I love your strategy. And kicking back three hundred, and it was building. And I got up to three thousand. And even with, I got up to three thousand after. Losing about four hundred and fifty to five hundred dollars on Super Bowl bets. Ooh. Thank you, MVS, your boy, your Packer boy, MVS, not blank. showing up. He if he would have just got twenty five yards receiving, I would have won. Instead of losing four hundred, I would have won like three hundred. But, but hey, that's MVS. That's I love what, you what you're get. doing. I love your strategy. But for those of you listening, you can relate this to a hot table run. As much as I'd love to think that it is a sustainable model, the house always wins. So you have to be, be very calculated. You have to be very disciplined. You cannot be reactive. You cannot try to chase. You did try to chase today. You have to avoid that. I did try and chase, but you, you know what? You have to avoid that. Like Looking play, at my chase right now. that will bring you back down to zero. You have to stick with your recipe, your home basketball teams. I think you're on to something there, and you stick with that. And today was a rough day. For home basketball teams, because Arizona almost lost. Uh, no, Arizona did lose. Kansas no, Arizona, almost lost. Arizona lost. On a so this, this is the deal. Beater. We're Woo. sitting there and we're swinging the stakes, and we got the Arizona Arizona State game on on the side. And I, I am that. vaguely watching out of the corner of my eye. I can believe that. And Arizona was down. They keep getting back up. They were and I was the like, no, they, they, they took they, a short I, lead at the end, and and they were like, okay, we I, always we all figured Arizona was gonna win. exactly, so we weren't really watching that close, and so they have the lead, and then they go to the free throw line, and they miss the first free throw, and they make the second free throw to go, up and they're two. up two with like. Two point three seconds left, and I said it. Why do you make that? I know because you know they're taking a three. And they cash money off the wrong foot from sixty feet. Arizona State inbounds the ball at Arizona with two point or three point nine seconds. Two point nine. Two he, point he, nine. he heaved it with like a full two seconds. Catches left. it right around their own three point line with his momentum going towards half court. Takes a he's going to the right side of the court and he jumps off his left foot and heaves one. You know what he said? And it's nothing but net. In that single shot, that 60-footer that does not touch a bit of rim is a swing from costing me $500 to if they miss that, I'm probably sitting up about two grand. Yeah, there's nothing better than hearing a man tell you about his bad beats. I mean, I feel like that's something we can all resonate with. And did you hear what he it said? It hurts. Did you hear what he said? No. When he shot the ball? No. They reported it after the game. He said, house money. <laughs> <laughs> Fun tokens. It's all good. You're still up $2,500. Not. I'm losing it, though. Yeah, slowly, I need but to surely start you'll winning come back some back. Hey, all good things must come to an end. Let's, right now, as we speak. I must tell you, you're as not going to be able speak, to retire off of your as we speak, parlays. You're going to have to get a little As we that. speak. Nope. Just look at that one game that I'm isolating. I'm just going to let you folks know he is one leg into a one, two, three, four, five, no, six, I'm seven not. leg. I'm not. 
I'm not. That already hit. That already hit. Marquette, is that hitting? Up 10 with five to go. I guess if they're the Spartans, maybe not. Duke up 20 with 14 to go. Purdue. Purdue guys, is down 65 to 52. This guy bets. Down guys. 13. This guy bets. With eight to go. In case you didn't know, he bets. I've actually started to subscribe to the, For the most part, I've been to the front that. runner home team gambling method, and I can attest that it is a pretty sure far way to, to make at least a little bit of scratch, but you have to be calculated about it. So gamble with caution. If you have a problem, call by any hundred. Uh, who problem. gives a shoot? No, if you if you if you can't pay your bills because you're gambling yes. and you're trying to play yes. too much catch up, yes. Then call Steve. He can hook call you up. Call me and I'll tell you <laughs> to stop gambling. No, ride the home teams. So ride the home team. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, yes. If you have a problem, I have your solution. What else do we love to gamble on? Um, you mentioned real quick can we, the other day. Can we gamble? You mentioned the XFL game. No, oh, nobody's, <laughs> nobody's betting on that. I did mention it, though. You did. And I, I went to name a couple headliners. And yeah. I was like, oh, look, Josh Gordon. Look at that. He plays for the uh, C-axis or whatever. The C-axis? <laughs> you <laughs> mean the, the Seahawks? C- no. Sea Dragons. Sea Dragons and yeah. like the Battle Axis or something. Yeah. The Battle of Your Axis. The before. XFL. The XFL Man. needs to embody their old, uh, like, their old yeah. like, marketing scheme right. where they put, like, whatever they wanted on their name plates like he hate me he hate or like me. you know like i don't care or like you know sack so, Nesta, or like big nuts just put whatever you want on the back of their jersey because like it's like the xfl yeah. it's like the wwe and like, i felt they need to embody that and like develop personalities but yeah back to what i was saying josh gordon and aj mccann going head to head and i tried to look beyond that and i looked through the whole rosters didn't recognize blank, him. Blank, blank, blank. So I watched AJ McCarron through a couple air mails, and then I watched Josh Gordon catch a three point conversion. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Honestly, the whole conversion thing intrigues me. If you can go, it's for a little cheap, but one it is good from for the entertainment. two, two from the five, three from the ten. If if you think think about that in NFL terms, how easy, how much easier it would be to make comebacks. Watching the guys in the XFL, watching your boy Josh Gordon and McCarron. Damn, my boy. There, I mean, it wasn't terrible football. It wasn't the NFL. It wasn't college. You think the scouts but, are watching, though? I think probably. I think the NFL needs something like that, and that's what we were talking about. If you're gambling on the XFL opening weekend, you do problem. you have a problem? Good chance. Because Good what chance. are you gambling on? <laughs> what do you get? I, I bet you this team's going to win. Vegas has the scoop. Vegas probably has somebody in the stands watching. Right. But you're just like, AJ McCarron went to Bella Bella. That's my guy. I'm going to ride you're with him. Literally, it's the same as a cat picking March Madness games. And you're sitting there saying, ooh, Sea Dragons versus the Mud Dogs. I yeah. bet the Mud Dogs but are going to win. Give you, I will give you. That if you watch like the flow of the game for the first quarter yeah. and a half, then you place your bet. Because uh, I don't know if it was the Sea Dragons or if it was the Battle Axes or whatever. You just knew. Uh, they had a guy. Oh. Was, one of them had a guy that was a dude. Wow. And he was, they're going to need number people. Three. <laughs> people ask for Evan to tweet you out when he's watching XFL games. He will give you the line after about. Five to give me 20, twenty snaps. No, he'll give me twenty-two uh, minutes and thirty seconds, and ooh, I can call. It. I can he'll call it. it. He'll call it. He but. knows the dudes. So, the last thing that we would like to discuss today is just a little NFL action, a little NFL free agency primer sort of thing. Mm. I'm a diggy. Um, we got NFL action coming up. The next thing that comes up. You know, and it's unfortunate that it's going to take away from all the attention being put on the XFL and soon to be the USFL. I mean... When's that start? What, the USFL? Like in April? 
Um, it seems like. And, you know, all the attention being paid to those two wonderful leagues um, in this little stubborn thing called the NFL is about to start its free agency and try and take away some of the spotlight. Um, but so, the free agency is the really start of the 2023 to 2024 season. And we've got teams franchise tagging last week. We got teams cutting guys. The Lions, I know, cut Michael Brockers to save ten Did million they? of cap. Yeah, of course, to save ten of million in cap. Stole another franchise. <laughs> He's a terrible, terrible What's player that didn't play. His his cap hit was going to be eleven million next year, and he didn't play it down last year. What's his dead cap number? Less than a million. Oh, that's they no saved brainer. ten million. It's a great move by your boy Brad. Yeah, and there's also, a, they're gonna they they're gonna cut Haloti Vitae. signing, great cut though. They they didn't he sign him. They traded good. for him. He was never good. No, they traded for him to be a presence in the locker room. President of the locker room. Presence. Oh, and it worked. I think they've been doing okay. Has their D line been okay? I don't, know. I don't know. I don't know. What was your view up in Lambeau? How is the D line doing? I don't know what kind of presence they got from him. They'd have to ask the players. I think Maybe. you had a good bird's eye view of seeing. Are you talking the about impact. presence? Yes. Or presence. No, we're not talking Santa Claus. Christmas. Here. What did you get them for Christmas? Why would you go there? What are, what are you doing? What well, kind I was of... giving him presents in the locker room. That's garbage. <laughs> He's garbage. Why are we even talking about him on our podcast? I just mentioned that they cut him to save $10 million. Shut up with your Lego hair, okay? <laughs> Let's erase that. Bobby Wagner was cut. Could be signed by anyone there's a tweet. Did you see that tweet I sent you today? Did you right after we Jim left. Rome on me? No. Other teams are making their moves, and the Lions are coming in prime to make a key signing. They've opened up lots of cast space, ladies and gentlemen. Did I sound this like Jim Rome? The point where the Lions become a force in the NFC. Let me kick it back over to my friend Steve, who's talking about their cap space. Did I go Jim Rome on you? A little bit. That's amazing. The yeah. the compliment you just I feel gave like me. You got that from all the TikToks that you watch. I love the TikToks. The Lions have cut Michael Brockers, who was a deadbeat, nothing good for nothing, deadbeat husband. And now, <laughs> now that you mention it, I can totally see the Jim Rome cadence in what I delivered, but yeah, that was absolutely. not the intention. The Lions have saved ten million dollars in cash saved- space. To be a lot. You're probably wondering why we're still talking about Michael Brockers. <laughs> Brockers. I don't know either. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> to a degree, that kind of sounds like Shefty, too. <laughs> there was a little bit of Shefty there. In there was. It's like, so there's Shefty, and then there's Jim Rome, and then right. like in between. In between. And you're right there. Hello. Good evening. This is Adam Schefter, and you know what? The Lions will indeed cut Michael Brockers to save. $10 million this week. I can confirm <laughs> this from sources inside the organization. So, back to Aaron Rodgers. And it could be Jim Rome. <laughs> you don't know, right? <laughs> it could I'm, be Jim could, Rome. Could you it imagine could be... if Shefty just went on the Rome show, how gold that would be? They're both just Needs doing that back happen. and forth. Ladies I have more sources than you do. We have more sources. I don't know what your sources are saying, but my people say that this is completely bonkers. <laughs> But oh, um, yeah, goal. teams teams are making moves. They're gearing up. Free agency season starts. I believe March fifteenth technically is the um, talking period. Our free agents lining and up. And then to March seventeenth, I think I I don't know that they're lining up, but that that tweet that I sent you earlier about how the lines are the number one destination destination for Jalen Ramsey. Michigan. I think if they get number one, it's right outside of Rockford. <laughs> so there's the Lions and just a step below is the Detroit Panthers <laughs> yeah. and the USFL. Um, and then below that, you can go to Michigan State. <laughs> but and seriously, because you're a Packer fan, we are on a better trajectory than you, so just pipe down for a minute. Um, 
And call me when you make the playoffs. This isn't serious. Yeah, call me when you make the playoffs, pal. How much does winning matter to you? Everything. If you, let me ask you this. If you were Lamar Jackson, would you rather. Oh, from an organizational standpoint or a player standpoint? From a player standpoint, just let me listen. Just listen here. If you were Lamar Jackson, would you rather play for. A hundred and fifty million guaranteed, and earn that hundred. And play in Baltimore, and earn the hundred, and earn the other hundred. You will. Or would you rather play in um, Atlanta, and have two hundred million guaranteed, and earn maybe three fifty? Hmm. I know what I would choose. Arthur Smith, the head coach. Who do they have? It's tough, though, because when... They have Kyle Pitts in London, a terrible offensive line, Tyler Algier is a running back, and a shoddy defense. Winning matters, but money matters, too. And you know what? I would take $150 million to play in... What he wants. Baltimore... To potentially win more. He's doing a good job negotiating for himself. Potentially win an MVP. Potentially win more marketing dollars. Right. Then go to Atlanta and just rot away for the rest of my career for $200 million. He's doing a good job negotiating. He wants his cake and he wants to eat it. And there's a TikTok going around about all the NFL GMs trying to figure out how they're going to pay their quarterbacks. Browns. And it looks like a scared face, and then it cuts to oh, yeah. the Cleveland Browns. And he's driving, driving a car, and he's smiling. <laughs> and there's it's, the dude from Narcos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hilarious <laughs> and spot on because yeah. the what what Cleveland did was so outside the norm. But look at that what, it's impacting free at, agency in a massive way. If you're Cleveland with the roster you have. Are you better with Jimmy Garoppolo at half the cost of Deshaun Watson? If Deshaun Watson can be what he was and keep building off that, then yes, they were fine with signing him with all that money. The problem is he took two years off. His confidence took a huge hit with everything that went on, and he's not the same quarterback anymore. He's not. He might be. He might get it back, but I'm not. No one ever can even look at him the same. The feel, he walks the, into a room and he's got the feel of right. a pedophile. <laughs> is, How is that going to be? Is that Jeffrey Epstein or is that Deshaun Watson? This guy trying to lead us to a Super Bowl or is he trying to get a happy ending? <laughs> trying to get his flag at half mast. Yeah. <laughs> but, but he's not what he was. NFL free agency is going to be pretty wild. Um,. I'm I'm hoping the Lions are big participants. I I don't know if any of the other teams in the division in the black and blue division is going to be any uh partakers in the the free agency. I don't know if the Packers are going to have cap. The uh Bears are obviously going to have pack, uh cap. So uh, we'll see what uh, Chi Town does. Probably pick up a, some O line and uh, receivers for Young Fields. But Packers aren't going to have cap. Vikings certainly aren't going to have cap because they're paying Mr. Cousins everything under the sun, <laughs> which is hilarious. You got your blinders on, pal. I don't think you've seen what the Packers have done already. <laughs> they have cap. Okay, folks, here we go. We're at the Packer Hour. We are at the Packer Hour. At the moment you've been waiting for, we've saved the best. But I don't know if you ventured further north so, than Waukegan, but uh, the yeah. Packers have been making some moves. So not only have we restructured Aaron Jones, we restructured Jair Alexander, arguably the best corner in the league. Very, arguably, very, very arguably. Arguable. probably top five. Can we can, yeah. can we agree on that? Top three, sure. Top five, top three, top five, top four, top five. Name four better. Everyone. Oh, okay. There we go. Top five, top, top three, top five. Definitely. Top I five. think he's probably top three. 
I would take and, one Sauce Gardner over him right now. Yeah, you take Sauce Gardner. And Ramsey. And I'll take Jair Alexander. I'll take we'll Sauce. We'll both be fine. Right? Sauce is the boss. We'll both be fine. We will be fine. Sauce is a rookie, so yes, I'll give you that one. Uh, we restructured Preston, which I don't love. But Preston Smith. I, he's not one year old. He's not a big contract. End of career edge rusher. He's not a big contract, and he's a good leader, so I'm fine with it. Uh, that gives us six hey, million. Hey, real pause, six real quick. Million. I am predicting right now they will be cutting Preston Smith next year, just like yeah, probably cut, like the Lions that. cut Michael Brockers. So six million uh, in cap space right now. We still need to rework Rodgers if he comes back, or we need to trade him, or he's retiring, which I'm pretty sure everyone knows that he's not retiring. Uh, we could also restructure Kenny Clark to probably save, I think we could save a decent amount, depending on how they redo it, and they can restructure Bach. It just depends. I think they're waiting on those big ones until they figure out what Rodgers is doing, because if he's not back then they're probably not going to restructure those and they're going to roll forward with love. Options from here. There's a couple different directions this can go. Rodgers can come out of his retreat. He says, I'm all in. Let's run it back. He can come out of his retreat so I retire. Probably not going to happen. He can come out of his retreat say, I want to trade. In which case, things get real interesting. Destinations. People like the Jets. People like the Raiders. Personally, I think I love the Niners for him to go. I think that's an off-the-radar situation for him to go to. I'm fine with any of those destinations as long as we get two first-round picks. Because then and if one of those has to be a future pick in case Love is a bust. Let me punt him, draft his replacement, try to roll forward. The most likely scenario, he's back, ladies and gentlemen. He's back. But, and, That's and, his best chance of success. And, hey, uh, I just want to share this with the listeners. The best possible option for Lions fans and NFC North Black and Blue Division fans is Aaron Rodgers comes back to throw another six picks to Kirby Joseph. Take it away, Evan. You love to say that because you're in denial and you've been hurt. I've I'm just saying what I've witnessed. You've witnessed a lot of losing. You have witnessed a lot of losing. No, I haven't. Not near the losing. No, I haven't. <laughs> so there's not a lot to say when it comes to the Packers. I think uh, the defense is fine. Just keep, I wish we would have made changes at the coordinator and gotten someone that's a little bit more aggressive and a little bit more creative, but. We'll be fine on defense. Uh, so I think invest less in the defense, unless a little bit more in the offense. And get some receivers. They're going to be just fine. No, they're not. They're going to be trash again. I think the more curious option, the one that could go either way, was if, you, if he wants a trade. And I'm just as interested in that option. It's a little bit more of a gamble in the short term. In the, in the short term, Rodgers is a safe bet. If he leaves, he could be good. Love could be the next best thing. He could be the third Hall of Fame quarterback in a row. Or he could be not that guy. And we have to go somewhere else. Not that guy. So, that's real interesting. I, I feel like if Rodgers is gone, we, they have to do something to give him like some serious help. And they'll have the capital to do that. So you want to get one first round pick this year, one first round pick the next year, in case he's not the guy. And I think either way it works out. So I'm telling you, we're looking at a win win situation. I love it. What more could you ask for? I mean, to be set up like this, I mean, it's kind of weird because if Rogers does come back, then what do you do with love? And and that's the, I mean, that's the theme of everybody's life. What do you do with love? Yeah. Do you accept it or do you reject it? I agree. There's um, so many ways it could go, and I love so it. So it's it's Crazy interesting when you you say there's no there's like how much better could you have it? it I mean, how greedy are you how, gonna get? Right? Yeah, how greedy? I mean, you guys just have it all going, right? And things are like you have a quarterback in place. 
to take over for a Hall of Famer and like you're deciding between the two. It's and ideal, I get right? it. I get it. We've it done it the, does we've seem seen it before. Ideal. We've seen it before. We have. Well, to a degree, we've seen it before in yeah, the transition Brett for Green Bay. Brett was not playing anywhere near the level of Rodgers towards the end of his career. Right. And even after he left, after he good, had a good season. Right. But it wasn't historically great like we've seen from Rodgers in the past the right. two years before this one. Like, he still went on and did big things without us. So, like, I still think there's a lot of gas in the tank. I agree. I agree. I think there is. But then, what do you think about when you hear this? Games. And that's exactly what they've done. One and six, dark, ugly. But since then, this football team has come to life. Since then, this football team has showed you what they're capable of and shown you that next year, this bar is set at nothing less than competing for the NFC North title. Jared Goff takes the knee. Two teams will meet out in the middle of the field to say job well done. Job better done on this night by your Detroit Lions. And every one of you listening to my voice right now should be proud of this team. So what do you what are you listening to that I can give in you reliving the moment when you're sitting there and watching all the Honolulu blue and silver just stomp all over everything that you hold sacred. It hurt, that's for sure. And but you yeah, you you view yourself as we're the younger team, the up and coming team. That's fine. And you have Trash boy Aaron Rodgers, you view yourself as well. Could you be in any better position? Ah, that's, ah, fine. that's fine. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers broke his thumb this year, and things didn't go our way. You guys didn't have anything to play for that night, other than what about all you? All the pressure was on us. We didn't handle it. We lost. It is what it is. But who had a I, terrible game throwing lots of interceptions? That's a, that's great, but. This next season is a different season. That season How is could you, over. Folks, that folks, season is over. could you imagine a better position? That season is over. Every season is a reset. You got to relearn how to win. You got new guys coming in. Hopefully Tiger doesn't hand Aaron a tampon. So the Vikings are probably going to come back to earth a little bit. It's probably going to be the Lions division to lose. Everybody Wait, what? That. Lions division to lose. Could there be any other better place to be than a Packer fan? I mean, I'm fully expecting us to be in the mix next year. In the mix. And we've been in the mix every Like year. in the kitty litter? Since like mixing it up? I've started rooting for the Packers since I've been watching football. We've been in the mix every year. Can you say the same? Yeah. No, you can't. I've been in the mix. I for can the say the same. The, Packer, the Packers have been in the we mix. We have been in the mix. The Packers, I, not the right mix. I can. We have been. <laughs> we've mix. been in the mix. We've been mixing it up with the bottom of the league. We've been in the mix for the top pick, the middle pick. So I, I look. I get it. It's exciting for you guys, and I, I do think you guys are in a good position. But I think you need to just temper the expectations a little bit before you start calling for playoffs and. How about we win a playoff game first before the playoffs are the expectation? I love that they're the expectation. They should be the expectation every year. So I look forward to that being the future. I would like for there to be a rivalry. Then we'll see how it goes, you know? It sure will Division be interesting winning. to hear, see if Brad can duplicate some more of that draft success and what his picks will continue to do. Yeah, he's continue. only done it for two years. The coaching so will do it for three. Players. Outside the wire. Is there anything else in the world going on right now besides sports? I mean, I'm obviously besides there's sticks, a lot. Besides sports. There's a lot going on, but, um, I you know, I think that's, that's a good spot to end the, the episode. I feel like we covered a lot of good uh, topics today, um, and, and shared some we of our some breaking news. lack of wisdom. We delivered breaking news. Yeah, we sad, always do. Sad news. Sad news on Don Shane, but um, there's lots of good news. The Red Wings have been making a playoff push. The Pistons have been making a good push for the top pick. Um, 
Detroit sports, we're doing all right. The the Spartans, I feel like, have shown what they're capable of for the end stretch, and we'll see how it falls, my man. Hell of a recap, my Steven. There was a lot been going on since we last chatted. And just remember, it's January, February. It's a That's it, folks. Enjoy your week. What a great episode.